must be must be a big cloud to hold all these recordings. Well, good morning, everyone. Gregory and Robin up here in Bozeman, Montana, for our Thursday morning uh, business call. And happy Leap Day, everyone. <laughs> Is anyone on the call today born on Leap Day? Only get a birthday <laughs> once every four years? Wow. <clears throat> well, <clears throat> we have a subject that we're going to leap forward with today on Leap Day. And it's you know, talking about the tax advantages of a home-based business. And I've been enjoying these benefits for over 30 years. I've worked with some really wonderful accountants and educators and learned quite a bit. I want to put a disclaimer up front. I'm not an accountant. I'm not a financial planner. But I'm going to share with you some knowledge, information, and experience that Robert and I have in taking advantage of the benefits uh, of owning a home-based business. And I don't know if you realize, but there's really two sets of tax laws in America for business owners and for everybody else. And uh, I'm happy to congratulate all of you as business owners, along with us, you know, with your own LifeWay business. And Robin, you were doing some research and was, was it back in 1999, you said? You want to share that uh, tidbit of information real quick? Uh, back in 1999, the IRS reinstated favorable tax treatment for home office deductions. Yes. Uh, and make tax planning more attractive for networkers. If you take your network marketing business seriously, you may qualify for some serious tax advantages that are available to business owners and in particular, home-based business owners. So get your notepad out. We're going to give you some information. And it's tax time, you know, April 15th, most of us here in America are filing taxes or extensions, okay, one or the other. But, you know, there's a difference between tax preparation and tax planning. And if you do proper planning, you know, you're going to get a lot of money back. And it's interesting to note that the advantages of a home-based business sometimes precede making money at a home-based business. And many times people can sign up, become a direct seller with any wonder, number of wonderful companies, of course, none as wonderful as ours, right? Uh, and from day one, you can start writing off things that up until that day were non-tax deductible. They were tax taxable. So, um, so tax planning is required. Uh, and it's very important because you could... From day one, you can probably find anywhere from six to ten thousand dollars of additional deductions, and all the IRS requires is two requirements for being a legitimate home-based business. Number one, to be in pursuit of a profit, and I think that includes all of us, right? Be in pursuit of a profit, and number two, you need to make a profit within three to five years. Well, that's pretty reasonable because let's face it, many businesses start up and don't generate a profit for the first one, two, or three years. But if you can get an extra six to $10,000 in tax deductions, meaning paying six to $10,000 less on your personal taxes than you were before you joined LifeWave, that's funding. That's a way of funding your business. So this is serious business uh, and a serious opportunity to not only make money, but to save money. And a good friend of mine told me years ago, he says, it's not how much you make, it's how much you keep that counts, right? And uh, and certainly we all, you know, I, I, I'm fine paying my fair share of taxes to support our, our nation and the roads and other things, but I'm not, I don't really like, I want to pay as little as possible. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm not going to opt out and be out of the system. And some people may choose that path. It's not mine, okay? My path is to, you know, play by the rules, but to know the rules to play. And, and so we're in it to win it, as the saying goes. And we get some really great information to share with you. And at the end, I'm going to share some resources that you can tap into yourself. You really owe it to yourself to understand these business, these benefits. And you know what? Most accountants don't know and don't tell you what you can. You take your, you, you know, your accounting information to your accountant and they you know, and, and typically they might have 300 clients all asking to fill out. And if you're lucky to get a one or two hours 
to fill out the paperwork. And that's the difference between tax filing and tax planning. And we do tax planning. We have an accounting firm down in Southern California that specializes with high income network marketers. And so we love working with them and they save us lots of money. And they even give us something that's called you know, uh, audit insurance. So we pay a little extra every year and if we're ever audited, they cover it completely. And we've never been audited. So uh, I'm happy to say, at least I haven't been for about 25 years. And that's when I was using a different accountant. Anyway, so I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. Robin, is there anything you'd like to share before I jump into the document? Okay. Just going to... well, okay. Thank there. You. Thank she you. Is. Thank you, Gregory. <laughs> and one of the really exciting things is if you're someone who has a full-time job and has not taken it, and you're in a direct selling company, you have a home-based business, and you have not taken advantage of this opportunity, it's time to start now. A lot of people, you know, have a full-time job and they they don't think there's great benefits, but when Gregory starts getting into the details of the mm -hmm. things you can get um, right off, it's amazing. <laughs> it's amazing. So he, I'm going to turn it back to him because he's got a great list to share with you um, and to start your own, if you haven't, start keeping track because this can make a huge difference. And thank you, Robin, for doing some research yesterday. This came up out of our director's call yesterday as a topic we all thought was very timely because it's tax season. You should be doing some planning right now, compiling the information for your tax return uh, here in the United States. And I don't know what the timing is for our Canadian partners, our Mexican partners, and people around uh, the world that might be listening in. But in the U.S., April 15th is our tax deadline for personal income tax filing. March 15th is the deadline for corporations. So you need to either be filing or filing uh, an extension. We very frequently file extensions. Um, I heard someone say once that the extensions don't get audited as much as the people that file on time. I don't know if that's true or not, but certainly um, it's something to consider. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. And by the way, this document I'm going to share, uh, I'll be posting in the Facebook group after uh, this call is over, so you don't have to take copious notes because this document will be there for you to download, and we'll also load it up and put it probably in Live Younger Success. So um, <clears throat> this is a document from a company out of Salt Lake, Soul Essence. I can't, uh, I can't give you any personal um, opinion on them except they compiled a nice document. They provide tax services for home-based businesses and it's and they're in draper utah where our new corporate headquarters is going to be so if you go visit visit the company once they open up the new office you can go visit these guys but uh, so I, I i can't say anything about them that's not who i use but they came up with this wonderful document the tax deductions for an mlm direct selling business and obviously you know your you know income and you know the money you earn is your you know, what you're going to base your tax return on. Uh, and it's all of your income from your various sources. The thing we want to jump into is the expenses. And this is an extensive list. It's three pages. So I'm just going to briefly touch on these. You know, accounting is a tax deductible expense. And it could be tax preparation programs, phone apps, accounting fees, so many things. In life, I have advertising, business cards, information package, samples, samples, yes, samples, flyers, testing, social media, anything related to your business, you should have a category and you're keeping track of your advertising and certainly your bank charges. I recommend everybody have two bank accounts, one account. It doesn't have to be a business bank account, but it's a separate personal account that you're running your business through. So when it comes to tax season, you know, the things that might be tax deductible are all in one place. We do the same with our credit cards. Let me just clarify. It may not be called a business account through the through the banking structure, Correct. but you use it for business only. So Robin and I have two sets of bank accounts. We have two sets of credit cards. We have credit cards that we use for personal stuff, and we have credit cards that we use for business stuff, Okay. And we have a bank account for personal. We have a bank account for business. 
Uh, now we are an LLC, which, so we actually have an LLC business account. But prior to becoming an LLC, we just had two separate bank accounts. One we use for business, one we use for personal. And all the bank charges, uh, children paid. I've never gone down this rabbit hole, but you know, money paid the children for helping things like delivering flyers, stuffing envelopes, cleaning offices, can be deductible. But they even it's the only thing they highlighted on the whole you know three pages. Must keep a detailed log of what they did and how you paid them. But just something, uh, commissions and fees. You know, commissions. Money we pay uh, to your downline or your upline, yearly and monthly fees, registration fees, enrolling in your LifeWay business. That $25 is tax deductible. Computer, internet, and technology, all the software, online services, internet, yeah. internet expense. We just signed up with Starlink. It's $129 a month, 100% tax deductible. Is it 100% used for business? No, we use it some personal too, but 100%. Computer maintenance, contract labor. This is an important one. Services paid to individuals and subcontractors. And, and we do this for yard maintenance, for house maintenance. And, uh, and our accountants know how to split that up. So a percentage of it goes to business and a percentage of it is a personal expense. But we keep track of all our contract labor. We send out 1099s every year for everyone we pay to over $600. Certainly the cost of goods sold, that's the product we buy that we use for sampling. And we use some of it ourselves too, but we give away more than we use. So we write it all off and that's up to you. That's your call. But all, you know, and another thing, important thing, you must purchase a certain amount of product to qualify your position. That's a business expense. That 110 BV that you have to purchase every month, that is a business expense. Uh, trade shows, I love doing trade shows, rent or venue, uh, presentation supplies, all of this stuff, dues and subscriptions, you know, educational programs. I, uh, we subscribe to various educational programs and that's all deductible. Educational expenses, all deductible. Event expenses. When you travel to a conference or to a boot camp or to anything, life wave, related maybe it's a a business maybe it's a patching party that's a business trip and that's a business expense and here's a big fat one that most people most accountants don't take advantage of a home office and a separate room in your office or home to do business and accounting maybe you don't have a separate room but maybe it's a portion of a house or a room maybe you have a one room house so but a portion of your home you could be dedicated. We dedicate 35% of our home. We have a 4,000 square foot home, 35%. That's 1,400 you know, square feet that we dedicate. So we take 35% of our, you know, mortgage, interest, and you know, utilities and everything is business expense. Okay. And a good accountant will know you how to do that. But it's, you know, so this is a, a whole list of things you can do. And that alone will save you thousands of dollars, I promise you. Now, how about insurance? Professional insurance and liability insurance, health, property, key man life, some of these things we do, some of them we don't. Interest paid on loans or equipment. So if you bought a computer on payments and you're paying interest on it, that's very deductible. Loans on equipment. Uh, janitorial expense. Uh, we have house cleaning expenses. And part of that we write off because they're cleaning our office space also. Laundry and cleaning. Now, I, I haven't taken advantage of that, but theoretically we could because the only reason I take my shirts to the dry cleaners is because those are the ones I wear when I'm going on trips. So I probably should start keeping track of my dry cleaning expense. Legal and professional services, of course, that makes sense. And you know, licenses. We don't need any licenses here in Montana, but depending on where you live, it may require a business license. Most home-based businesses don't require a license. Most people don't even know you have a home-based business. So, but if there is any licensing required, you know, meetings, if you're renting a place, at a room at the library, that's all deductible. Mileage on your car. There's two ways to take vehicle expenses. You could choose mileage, or you could take, uh, at, you know, for when you're going on business trips, the second option, there's a vehicle deduction. That's more complicated, but it's a it's a really powerful way. 
If you don't drive much, the second option is probably better. If you drive a lot of miles, if you're a road warrior, the first option is probably better, keeping track of your mileage. Merchant fees for credit card convenience fees. Uh, here's office expense other than consumables. Every pen, paper, everything we buy at Office Depot is a business expense, okay? And uh, office rent. We don't have office rent, but some of you might, and that would be a, a write-off. Officer wages, you know, uh, it, certainly yeah, that's a business expense, but most of you won't have officer wages because you're probably going to remain 1099. Uh, once we became an LLC, Robin and I actually get a salary from our LLC, plus, you know, uh, we, you know, the profits from our LLC kind of stream back to us, similar to a an uh, uh, S corporation. Purchases any equipment. Oh God, I love this new Mac 16 inch laptop. Robin and I both got for Christmas because it was a tax expense. So we wrote it off in 2020 from our 2023 uh, insur uh, income. Office furniture, vehicles that cost over, huh? $500. Well, Robin's Lincoln cost over $500 and so did my Audi. So I guess we got some write-offs there. And our accountants know how to do that and, and maintain that. Repairs to equipment of computers, office equipment, refunds and allowance, money that's returned for products or services returned or something, shipping and postage. You know, all of our postage goes, you know, whether it's UPS, FedEx, or USPS, small equipment, any equipment that costs less than $500, when it's over $500, your accountants may choose to expense it out over a period of years and depreciate it, but it's still a write-off. It's a business expense. Supplies. Again, here's product samples. <laughs> Remember that. Every time you, you patch somebody, it's a, it's a tax-deductible event, as was the mileage to drive to the coffee shop to meet them. So uh, taxes uh are tax taxes are tax deductible how about that phone i tell you what we run some big phone bills and our phone bills are all most 90 percent of our phone calls are business related so we write off 100 percent of our phone calls because we don't keep track of the little bit of difference in there travel and we manage to talk about life wave wherever we go whenever we go so uh, our hotels cab fare Uber, Lyft. Our trips to Hawaii. Our trips to Hawaii. We we did several <laughs> LifeWay meetings in our last trip to Hawaii. Okay. So we're coming down to home stretch. Utilities. And this is important for a home-based business. And we take a percentage of all of these, elect electricity, gas, water, sewer, all of those, we take a portion of our total home expenses and we write it off, and, and that's very acceptable in the eyes of the IRS. They expect that with a home-based business that you're going to write off part of the expenses of your home that until you joined your home-based business, until you joined LifeWave, weren't tax deductible. So uh, vehicles, this is the big one. There are two ways to take vehicle expense, so I'm not going to go into that. That's something you need to learn about. Oops, I didn't mean to do that. And make your own decisions. Uh for the most part, I used to always track the mileage, and now our, our accountants handle it uh, a different way. You know, so uh, wages that we're paying anybody that's helping us. You know, we have uh, a bookkeeper and personal assistant. We have, uh, you know, housekeepers. We have uh, maintenance and yard maintenance. All that comes in, and website expense. So I'm happy to tell you, Live Younger Success, LiveYounger.com, and you know all of our various websites. Uh, they're all business expenses that, you know, we pay before we owe one penny in taxes. So this is a really good source here uh, of information. And again, I will post this PDF in the um, in, in the Facebook group here, make available to you. I wanted to point out there's another uh, source that I found this morning and in time gone, gone by, uh, we had a gentleman that some of us work with some, some of you may know Sandy Botkin and Sandy was the premier educator for the network marketing industry and on the tax benefits, home-based business companies used to hire him to come in and teach their people how to set up their accounting 
practices. And he now works with a company called Midas IQ, M-I-D-A-S-I-Q.com. And you can get a copy of his book, Seven Ways to Legally Avoid Paying Taxes. And it's not really to avoid, it's to minimize, okay? And that's the goal. We're not teaching tax evasion. I guess we are teaching tax avoidance because we're taking advantage of the laws in the tax code that allow us to take legitimate expenses. And I just ordered a copy of his book this morning. Uh, it's been around for, for ages, but that's another source. We'll post a couple of those sources in the Facebook group also. But as you can tell, I'm excited to tell you uh, about this information because Robin and I make a significant income. I mean, we're this far away from seven figures a year. We almost crept over that seven figure mark but I got to tell you, a lot of that is legitimate business expenses that we didn't have to pay taxes on. Uh, so with that being said, I'm going to open it up. I'm going to bow out of the move the spotlight and I'm going to open it up for any Q&A or comments that anybody might have. Just raise your hand and I'll unmute you and uh, and we'll keep this uh, discussion. Robin wants to share something. You know, something that Gregory shared earlier it's, you know, you may not be making a profit mm -hmm. right now, but remember, it's the intention to make a profit mm -hmm. and that you take your business seriously. And when you take your business seriously, you're going to keep track of things. And so it's that's what's really important. And we had another tax preparer before the current one. And when we switched over to the current one that specializes in home-based business, the past a tax preparer, um, he said, you can't do that. You can't do that. Honestly, he didn't understand. Mm -hmm. So a generic tax preparer that you want to find out when you're working with someone, do they understand the benefits of a home-based business? Very, very important because they're different and there's a lot more available to us than he understood. So just make sure you're serious about you know, it says in three to five years, you want to get a profit. So when businesses start, a lot of times they don't make a profit right away. So just know it's your intention and seriousness to have a business. Yeah. And so um, and the difference between tax planning and tax preparation, you pay your accountant typically for tax preparation, but it's up to you to do tax planning. <clears throat> so it's up to you to think about and learn. Now, this place I mentioned, Midas IQ. They have a monthly education program. I think I'm going to subscribe to it just so we better know. And I've been exposed to this for decades. It's $99 a month or $600 a year. And they hold a monthly seminar for an hour. They teach you all the different core aspects. And they guarantee if you sign up that they'll save you at least $6,000 if you pay $600 for this program. Or they'll give you your money back and buy you a steak dinner. Okay, so how can you lose with that? But yeah. And I, I thank you for that. We'll talk about that. Yeah, right. <laughs> and the other part that Gregory mentioned kind of in passing here, we do have separate accounts and that makes a huge difference. That shows that you're taking your business seriously, that you have a different business account. It could be under the bank's you know, umbrella of a personal, another personal account, but it is used only for business transactions mm -hmm. and that you separate your purchases with your credit card. So you have a dedicated credit card for business expenses only. Mm -hmm. Very, very important. This again, proves that you are seriously in business. Mm -hmm. Okay, we wanna open up and see if you've got <laughs> questions, comments, feedback. You can raise your hand, you can unmute your line. Who wants to jump in? It was a lot in a very short <laughs> period. And, and someone did comment in the chat that you know, even though the IRS is not Canadian, it's very similar up in Canada, which I would expect it would be. But you want to check in with, you know, what are the regulations where you live, whether you're outside the U.S. or not. So who wants to make a comment or a question about anything we covered? Because it was a lot in a short period. Good job, honey. <laughs> Thank really you. good job. Yeah, it was bringing back old stuff. And Liz, do you want to comment? Because I know you personally know Sandy Botkins like I do. And, you know, we just had great times with him. And he held seminars for our organizations in the past. Sure. Um, I really like Sandy because even though he's got seven ways, he had a whole series of, it was like over a hundred <laughs> plus different 
tax deductions that you could uh, you could use. And if you go Google him, you'll find it and mm -hmm. you'll find all of his his uh, material. So I just did because I needed to make sure of how you spell Botkins because I remembered it was B-O-T-K-I-N and that's for sure what it is. So I put that in the chat. And Thank by you. the way, this group I mentioned, MidasIQ.com, Sandy is involved with them. They're using his materials and they're 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 pulling it forward along with the president of uh, the American Accounting Association. So very high end, well experienced people that'll be coaching you on on your taxes if you like. And and, and Gregory, those... one... go ahead, oh, go ahead, Robin. Oh, I was just going to say that there are some software programs that are available to download onto your phone. Mm -hmm that can mm -hmm. help tracking all this kind of, of thing um, very simply. One of them that I'm aware of is called Hurdler, H-U-R-D-L-R, and it's specifically designed for network marketers. So there's a monthly fee for it, but again, guess what? It's tax deductible. <laughs> <laughs> Yay, Liz. That's great. So for those of you that are sitting there in a bit of overwhelm that you're not doing all the things <laughs> we're talking about, it's okay. you got to start somewhere. And the key is to get started. And the more serious you take your business, the more serious your income becomes. And so really paying attention to the guidelines and the laws that pertain to your area can make a huge difference in what you get to keep at the end. So so yeah. this uh, this organization I mentioned, the MidasIQ.com, which Sandy Botkin, that's how I found it, because I did what you did, Liz. I, I Googled Sandy Botkin, see what he's up to. He's now affiliated with this organization. And for $9.95, you can get a hard copy and an, and an e-book of their tax strategy book. I'd encourage everybody to do that, to spend $10 and, and just you know peruse through it. Uh, maybe you want to check out this organization uh, that created this PDF that I went over today, but it's important that you do tax planning. And I think that's the take home, take home. learn about the benefits of a home-based business and do some personal planning. And Robin's reading from Midas IQ. It says 93% of small business owners overpay their taxes without knowing it. And Midas IQ will help you get back what you deserve. So, uh, so okay, I'm not seeing. I just any... wanted to mention is that because yeah. uh, I don't think you did. Sandy used to work for the IRS. That's where he got his his base of foundation from. Correct. He's not only an attorney; he's a certified tax accountant and tax preparation um, accountant. So you know he knows the game we're in, and he's been teaching it for decades, really. It loves the home-based business arena. Yep, that's his primary. And they have got okay. a free webinar too. So Dr. Pam, you've got your hand up. Go ahead, please. Yeah, I wanted to know about paying yourself. So you are a W-2 employee of your LLC. And you, you And how do you decide like how much you pay yourself? Or, you know, I know that it is obviously according to your needs and all of that, but tell me how that works. You know, our accounting firm actually sent us this whole survey that we took how much time we spend everywhere. And if we had to hire people to do that, what we'd have to pay. And, you know, we pay ourselves a nominal amount compared to what we earn. We probably pay ourselves 10% of that. Okay. So probably 80 to 90% of our income comes, you know, uh, you know, through the LLC as, you know, as revenue share, um, so, but we just, we do pay ourselves uh, uh, a nominal W-2 income on a monthly basis. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. That's a great question. Well, I have overwhelmed everybody. It's unusual to have no hands going <laughs> up. Everybody's going, oh my, I need to learn something. And we're right at the bottom of the hour. So I think we might just say, Amen, hallelujah. I hope you liked it all. Uh, we'll kind of end our, our home-based business tax portion of this morning's call and kind of open it up for any questions that people might have. Uh, and you could ask questions about uh, about the materials we just covered, but 
going forward for the next 30 minutes, because every Thursday we do 30 minutes of training, 30 minutes of Q&A, uh, it will open it up to any additional uh, topics that you might have on your heart or mind. So I see a couple of hands finally came up. Jana, go ahead, please. You can unmute yourself, yeah, dear. Yeah. There you go. Hi. We ha I used to have a, a tax accountant who was some big guy in New York. And he wrote, I think he actually wrote a book. Um, and it was called HireYourSpouse.com. <laughs> <laughs> and he had it set up so you could you could buy a hot tub for your spouse because they needed it because they worked for you and they were under stress. <laughs> you could get <laughs> gym equipment. <laughs> um, so anyway, I don't know if that's still an option, but I'm putting it out because I'm not married anymore, but it was very handy when I was. <laughs> Thank you. Thank uh, you. Well, you'd be surprised what you can write off. It, it is amazing. So <laughs> we invite each and every one of you to do your own digging and, and learn because like like we saw on that website, 93% of home-based businesses are overpaying in their taxes. <laughs> yep. You don't want to be one of them. Julianne. Good morning. So my husband and I um, met with our accountant a couple of weeks ago, and I came with my huge spreadsheet of all my deductions. And because I have a home-based business um, and we are married, but my name is not on the mortgage because um, when we bought our house, we weren't married and I couldn't be on the mortgage at that time. Um, so I cannot deduct any household expenses for my business, which is very sad. And um, so I just want to kind of have people being aware of that. But also with the new um, bylaws of um, LifeWave with your spouses being a brand partner, which Ron is a brand partner, who's kind of grandfathered in there, um, how does that work with you and Ro Gregory and Robin Yeah, with you being partners and how do you write off expenses that way? Let me, uh, let me address that and suggest you get a second opinion. Cause I don't agree with your accountant. Okay. And that's probably like the first accountant that Robin said we had. <laughs> <laughs> Just didn't first, understand home-based business. I don't business. think he got it. And that might be a good reason to call these folks. Soul essence in San Francisco, in Salt Lake and ask their opinion, but I disagree, and I would get a second opinion. Uh, and, and, you know, in most states, it's community property. You're in business together, whether you like it or not, you know, if you're married. So uh, I just think that you have legitimate write-offs, just like we do. The fact that, you know, the house is in his name. Well, Robin's car's in my name, you know? So <laughs> no, I, I just think that he's, he's not understanding and... and not willing to to go the go to the line with you. So I, I'd really advise you to get a second opinion, Julianne, because that's a lot of ex money you're leaving on the table if you don't write off your home office. Expense. A lot. Yep. Yeah. It's and a percentage of everything. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And and my next question is, um, so being in an MLM and running your own business, Mm -hmm. And the government gives you three years to make a profit. And if you mm -hmm. don't make a profit within those three years, mm -hmm. then, you know, what do they consider a profit if you are, I mean, I know you can't write off everything and mm -hmm. they're like, oh, this is just a hobby. But for people who are starting out, like I'm in my third year now and I'm like, making money, but I'm still not at that pivotal point where it's really. It's really three to five years. And okay. as long as you could document a genuine dogged determination, if you can say, Hey, I went to this meeting, I went to this seminar, you know, you're showing your activity that you're engaged in business. Mm -hmm. This is, this is, a, this is a business. It's not a hobby. You know, you never have any problem. It's a it's a general guideline of three to five years, but the primary rule is to be in pursuit of a profit, which you are. Okay. Yeah, Thank so you you're in that. good shape. And Liz said maybe she should rent a room from him for her business. What <laughs> idea, Liz? You could do that, but you know, uh, you need to, yeah, that's a good idea. and he could he could overcharge you. <laughs> <laughs> you 
you're going to make me start paying the mortgage. <laughs> All right. Hey, good morning, Lavelle. Brother. Um, yeah, great stuff, Gregory and uh, Robin. This was great because this is just a reminder mm -hmm. uh, because for some of us who have been around this industry for a long time, uh, mm -hmm. this is a, a great reminder. Um, actually, mm -hmm. in a couple of companies we've been a part of, we would actually say we're not a, and it would be in a slide, we're not an accountant, but you need to contact your accountant or find a good accountant because it could it could potentially be a great tax deduction for you, this business, where it can become free, actually. <laughs> yeah. We used to put that in our presentation, which was very attractive. It was. We may want to read rethink that. We need to do that with our <laughs> current presentation, Gregory. We'll talk about that during our mastermind group. But yeah. Gregory, I, I, I had to step away for a second. Um, and I wanted to ask you, did you mention the name of your of you guys account or name? Yeah, I didn't. And I'm happy to do that offline because they're primarily for high income. They have limited space available, so to say. Right. So they're not a big operation. They're, they're more boutique working with, you know, um, six and seven figure earner network marketers. So I'd be happy to share that with you offline. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that that incentivizes everyone on this call to hit six figures. Okay, there you go. Okay, but I Thanks. think what you know, <laughs> taking forward what you're saying, when you're working with accountants, say, how much do you know about home based business deductions? Because there's over 400 applicable deductions for home based businesses that aren't available to you know, like I said earlier, there's two types of tax laws for business owners. And for everyone else, and as a home-based business, you're a business owner, and there's special deductions for home-based business owners that aren't even available to uh, conventional business owners. So, I think that you said, go ahead, yeah. go ahead, Greg. Sorry. No, you go ahead and say I was going to switch to someone else, but go ahead and finish up, Lavelle. The other thing that you said, and I think we want to help everyone with here, because uh, we have some of my my personal group on here, that you need to give your business three to five years. You really exactly. want to go to work, guys, and and understand that most businesses do not make a profit in the first uh, year or two. Absolutely, yes. Uh, we want to actually, you know, encourage people to give yourself some time. Uh, you don't have to win the race, but finish the race. You know, it's interesting because you'll remember this. We always always used to say it's a three to five year plan to financial yeah, independence and freedom. Three to five years, friends. You know, and, and you have your one one year wonders. People came in from another company that was going down and a bunch of people came with them. They had a huge sphere of influence. Those are anomalies. Those are not the normals. The normals are people come in and they they build from ground zero. And it's pretty much a three to five year plan to success from ground zero. And just recognize some people are way above ground zero and there's some people that are below ground zero and it takes a little while just to get to ground zero. But, you know, it's the old adage, failing enough when you need to put the 10,000 hours in, which Lavelle, you've put in, I've put in, Robin's put in, many others on the call have put in our 10,000 hours. So we know the game we're in. So, uh, yeah, thank you. So great Diane, stuff. Great stuff. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, brother. Hey, Diane, go ahead, please. Okay. Um, my question is, which are your favorite rewards credit cards to use and do you use do you keep it to just one or do you use a two or three or what it doesn't matter we have a we have a one percent award card with our we're with a credit union we we pulled okay. out of the major banks you know we used to be right. with wells fargo and we wrote them off and they wrote us off so you know so our credit union has a one percent uh rebate card uh you know sometimes you can get mileage cards and accumulate mileage with airlines yeah. I think it's really smart, you know, to run your business through some type of rebate, excuse me, rebate card like that. Good, good right. point. Diane. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Carolyn. Good morning. Good morning. I have a question about deductions for patches. Does it exclude shipping and taxes? No, it includes everything. So everything you pay, shipping and tax, okay, deductible. It's Thank your, you. You know your total expense. I switched it both ways, and it was significantly 
more money. And I had started it that way, but then I got confused. So thank you. You don't have to pay taxes on taxes. <laughs> okay. Thank you. They'd like you to, <laughs> but you don't have to. <laughs> right. Yeah. Great. I don't see any other hands up. Uh, we can end the call early. Um, or is... Kara has a question. Oh, Kara has a question. Says, I... Will the tax accountant be able to recommend the proper type of business insurance for the industry? Um, we don't... Uh... Possibly uh, with our accountants, we, we did buy an insurance policy and that insurance policy is tax deductible. And um, I think your tax ac accountant could help you with that. You know, most of you at the stage you're at in your business probably don't need any business experience. LifeWave has a product liability insurance that, that covers us. So if someone gets hurt with the product, which never happens, you know, uh, you know, we we're covered by an umbrella policy. It's not really much insurance. You know, we have home insurance, we have car insurance, and we do have some business insurance because our business grew to the point that our accountant recommended that. Ravel, good morning. Hi, Gregory. Thanks so much for this valuable information. Just a quick uh, question. Did a tax accountant ever ask you or let you know about differentiating between personal use tax deduction on patches in this, you know, or any product versus what you use for samples? Or is the, did you just say the entire thing is tax deduction? My accountants do have never asked that intentionally because they know we buy a lot of product and we give away a lot of product for incentives and we use some of it. So, you know, uh, the fact that there's some incidental use of our personal is, you know, uh, we don't keep track of that. And the fact that we must buy product every month in order to qualify for the, for the bonuses as for the business, you know, if you're spending a hundred, if you're spending $150 a month to give you 110 BV, that's a business requirement. Even if you're using a hundred percent of that product, because if you don't buy that product, you don't get paid. Thank you. Yeah. Good question. Hey, Kara. Yeah, the question that I asked uh, that I had about insurance uh, was actually um, the need for insurance when you're doing any kind of event, like like uh, trade shows or something like that. And that is typically is is a mandate and a decision made by the event hosting company. And some events do require insurance, some don't. <clears throat> and so typically we don't get insurance when we're doing an event unless we're forced to do it uh, as part of the contractual arrangement with the with the hosting event or venue. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. and, and I do want to say, Kira, that, you know, as far as product liability, we don't need to cover that. The company covers that. Mm -hmm. So what Gregory mentioned is specific events. Like we did do an event last year and they did require... Uh, additional policy that we had for one day mm -hmm. and we got it out for one day but we are covered under the umbrella of LifeWave for product liability well, thank you yeah, last year we hosted a number of events at some colleges in in florida and texas and, and california and the colleges required that we have insurance and it cost about 150 dollars for a day the one day rider on that, but those were venues that were holding 500 to a thousand people. So good morning, Jada. You can go ahead and unmute yourself. Can you hear me now? There we go. Yes. Uh, right. Do we also need to write the individual's name down, the date and the patches that we let them sample? No. Uh, we don't do that. Okay. Okay. I wouldn't do that. You know, I think I keep track of your postage. And you can say, and you know, most of that was sending people patches, which is mm -hmm. true with us. You know. Yeah, we we send out a lot of priority packages with patches in them, and on every receipt from the priority package, we put down who it went to and what they got. Yeah. Just in case, but I don't think it's absolutely necessary. But we do keep track. You know. Uh, yeah. 
typically if you're meeting somebody for lunch or Starbucks or something and you're patching them, you might make note in your journal. And if it, but I, I don't think it, you need to track it to that level of detail. Yeah. And about meals, this is an important one. If you're going out and dining with a prospect or something, um, if you just have a dining expense, you get 50%. But if you're doing a meeting, <laughs> it's different. So you want to be really clear. Gregory, why don't there's you There's a difference between a sales put... meeting and a dinner. And they're the same place and it was the same menu. Okay. <laughs> it's just from an IRS standpoint, sales meetings, which can be at a swanky restaurant, is 100% write off. A dinner at that same restaurant with that same person is only a 50% write off. And we learned that trick from our accountants. So, you know, all of our dinners are sales meetings when we're out with our prospects. <laughs> hey, hey, Greg, real quick, Gregory. Uh -huh. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, the, the lady that was talking about earlier about uh, something about uh, equipment or need to exercise. We had a lady come to one of our meetings one time, a tax accountant, we used to work for our IRS. And she yep. said, you know, we work hard. We've got to exercise. We've got to, you know, get the stress off. So the equipment's downstairs in your basement or it's in another room or in the den. Take a break. Go exercise. It's a tax write-off. All the equipment that you have in your home. <laughs> Isn't that, <laughs> that sweet? And, and Robin got yeah. me to join the gym. And I just went yesterday for the first time. And, <laughs> uh, and that membership is a write-off because, you know, you could write off – we write off all health related expenses over and above what insurance doesn't pay. That's what I was. So your health, because our tax accountant told it have to be special with me, what I go through, but she said it has to be at least, I think she said 10,000 to 15,000 that year in order to, to write it off. Yeah. I'm not sure about that. Um, I can't answer that level of detail, but I know that we itemize all of our, you know, we buy a lot of other wellness products that, you know, are part of our, you know, and, and our LLC pays that portion of our health expenses. So it's a business expense to the LLC to help support us, their loyal employee, <laughs> to be healthy. So, uh, and it's all very legitimate. So, Greg, I'm, I'm asking one more. When you say LLC, I have an LLC so when you say that your LLC pays for that, you mean you let everything go up under the umbrella of the LLC so that way? Yes. Yeah. Okay. And our accountants know which things to kind of push out. That, you know, I, I err in the side of, of tax deduction and my accountants are savvy enough to say, oh, well, you can only take a portion of that. Okay. Okay. Right. Thank you so much. I appreciate you all so much. All of y'all, everybody, just awesome. Thank you. <laughs> well, we love and appreciate you too, honey. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Well, we're coming in for a close. It's about 10 to the hour. And, uh, <clears throat> you know, I, I'm just, I'm glad to be in a business that provides everybody with all of these health and wealth benefits. And this falls into the wealth benefits clause, doesn't it? That, it's not what you make, it's what you keep that counts. And owning your own home-based, life-based business helps you keep a lot more of the money that you would have otherwise donated to, to 1600, you know, uh, Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania Avenue. <laughs> okay, well, I guess we'll bring this in for a close. Thanks, everyone. Uh, we, we love and appreciate you and uh, <laughs> onward and upward. Have a great day. Unmute and say goodbye. We'd love to hear from you. Yeah. Thank you. This was great. Thanks, everybody. Thank Thanks you, Greg and Robin. Thanks, Robin. Very, very, very helpful. helpful. Thank you so and much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Great information. Thank you. 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 Thank